Miss Monroe, it's time. I can't face doing another scene with Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe only exists on the screen. Andrew Dominic's film, Blonde goes to great depths to explore and criticize the Hollywood studio system's creation of Marilyn Monroe and the exploitation of her. Dominic does this in a rather unconventional and formalistic manner. First off, the film is adapted from the novel Blonde, written by Joyce Carol Oates, which is a fictionalized biography of the life of Marilyn Monroe. Thus, the book and the film never suggest this is a documentary, but simply, they take the characters and events of the real world and place them in another space and time. This is no different than an artist taking liberties with alternative history films like this. Blonde should be viewed as a portrait of a character who is connected to a real person. You're going to imagine that next to your own real body is the imaginary body of your character whom you've created with your mind. The film explores this both in structure and form. Wide brushstrokes depict a past that looks and feels surreal, much like that of a memory or dream. He uses this to paint the outline of a young Norma Jean. He then uses stark black and white and a lush, forgotten Technicolor palette to portray the dichotomy between Norma Jean and her screen persona Marilyn Monroe. Dominic's portrait of Marilyn is a tragic one, and thus audiences and critics have claimed the film sensationalizes and exploits the tragedies of Marilyn's life. But cinema is not governed by the same code of ethics that documentary films are. Cinema is formalistic. Its purpose is to express feelings and ideas. It is an abstract and subjective medium. The film, for all intents and purposes, is the depiction of a Greek tragedy. Audiences feel betrayed by Blonde. Expecting fidelity to the real Marilyn Monroe, Dominic is interested in the cinematic portrait of a person. The power cinema holds by blending the real, the representation, and the law that was created due to the tragic life Marilyn lived as a result of studios and audiences' exploitation. After Marilyn's death in 1962, a publication in the Guide to United States Popular Culture read, As an icon of American popular culture, no other star has ever inspired such a wide range of emotions. From lust to pity. From envy to remorse. To say blonde is exploitative, means you miss the point Dominic was making. Marilyn was exploited. Thus, how does an artist express exploitation through a visual medium? In a sense, the exploiters painted this portrait of Marilyn, and that is what you are watching. You are not watching a biopic retelling the life of Marilyn Monroe. You are watching the painting of an identity its metamorphosis, and its exploitation. That is why every scene is graphic and hard to watch. The film's purpose is to criticize our desire and appetite for the Hollywood starlet. Owing to the contrast between her stardom and troubled private life, Monroe is closely linked to broader discussions about modern phenomena, such as mass media, fame, and consumer culture. It is Marilyn Monroe's role in life to make people happy. She's the blonde all gentlemen prefer. She's all the it girls, oomph girls, golden dream girls rolled into one. She's Marilyn Monroe. Film scholar Suzanne Hampshire has stated that she is never completely situated in one time or place, but has become a surface on which narratives of American culture can be reconstructed and functions as a cultural type that can be reproduced, transformed, translated into new contexts and enacted by other people. 
This is precisely what Dominic is interested in. The painting of the evolution of the tragic blonde starlet we called Marilyn Monroe. It's like a star exploded, right? It's like a star exploded and there's dust of her everywhere, you know? It's like the dust of her is still, it's still with us today.